Okay, thank you very much, Louise. Yep. Okay. So, when, indeed, Louise gave me uh, quite the charge in the 15 minutes I have to talk about the 50 years of solar system exploration. <laughs> uh, and indeed, I'm going to take that on, and uh, I hope to be able to do that. Uh, this sets the context of the importance of uh, the space to uh, understanding um, where we are in our solar system and uh, our future evolution. Uh, indeed, planetary science is a creation of NASA. We bring together a whole series of disciplines to be able to go to different places and explore. Everything we knew about the solar system about 60 years ago we got from the back end of the telescope or pieces that fell from the sky. And even then, we didn't really understand their origin and evolution. And now we've been able to trek out and really explore, I think, for the very first time in human history, the solar system. And the LPI has been a central part to that. Science is not done until we communicate it. And that, that sometimes gets lost on us because it's the natural thing that we publish. But it's really all about talking about it and meeting other people and really understanding what's happening in the field that moves it ahead. And the LPI plays a central role in that. So if I look back over 50 or so years of NASA's program, there's a mantra. You know, we, we have all sorts of different missions and it may be confusing to many people in the public about what should we be doing next and why is that so different? Why are we doing a rover here, orbiter there? And it's really because we're exploring the solar system in a very methodical way. We fly by, we orbit, we land, we rove, and we return samples. And indeed, uh, our approach has really been all about advancing the scientific knowledge of the origin and evolution of the solar system, the potential for life elsewhere, and the hazards and resources as they present uh, the exploration of space as humans trek out into the solar system. So if I organized all the activity that NASA's done and put the missions in that order, we can see from Mercury and the inner part of the solar system out to Mars, fly by orbit, land, rove, and return samples. And of course, uh, uh, in this set, then you can see the associated missions that have been going on. What also is overlaid here are the missions that we're working on right now. Uh, Bepi Colombo with ESA, InSight, uh, the Martian Moon's exploration mission from JAXA, Mars 2020. We're also working hard with the Russian Space Agency in, in the area of Venus climate and various uh, in situ landers and uh, 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 atmospheric measurement systems. Most recently, we're given the challenge of going back to the moon, uh, and this is a wonderful opportunity for us to enhance the science knowledge and use what we know about the moon to even do a better job of exploring our solar system by getting the chronology of the history of the solar system better by bringing back the right samples and um, uh, continuing on particularly in looking at uh, the far side of the moon and the number of things that we can do because human exploration will help facilitate that communication. So in that inner part of the solar system, that be Colombo, this is a European Space Agency mission this is going to Mercury. Uh, it has two components to it. One is uh, an ESA satellite. Another is another satellite that is uh, done by the Japanese uh, Space Agency. And indeed, we have an instrument in a, uh, the Italian suite of instruments on Bepi Colombo. And you'll hear much more about what's been going on at Mercury. Uh, in May, we're going to launch InSight. InSight is uh, not a rover. It's a lander. And it's really all about uh, putting down on the surface the most sensitive seismic measurements, uh, instruments ever made, uh, being able to drill down several meters and look at how the, the planet continues to cool, uh, and, and understanding the heat flow associated with that. And indeed, this is going to be launched uh, coming up very soon. It will be a very exciting mission. In fact, it will be so sensitive it can even measure impacts from the asteroids coming in uh, and uh, creating meteorites on Mars. Uh, the Martian Moon's exploration mission by JAXA is really an aggressive mission. It's all about going to Phobos and Deimos, exploring them, and bringing back a sample uh, from Phobos. You know, what's on that surface? Is it all Mars material, or is the origin of these bodies actually captured asteroids? Uh, and it's designed to help answer those questions. 
And we have a fabulous instrument on that, a neutron gamma ray spectrometer. Now, the other really big mission uh, in the inner part of the solar system that we're going for is uh, this one. This is uh, the Mars 2020 rover. This is really all about the start of seeking signs of life. Uh, it's, uh, it, it will land, it looks like Curiosity, it will, uh, will be launched in 2020, in July of 2020, and in 21 land and be able to go to uh, very diverse ge geological areas, uh, really get the context of the mineralogy, and then drill cores, create samples about the size of a piece of chalk, cap them in uh, uh, a, 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 sle a sleeve, and then lay them on the ground for later collection. This is really the start of sample return. And so uh, the next set of missions that we're currently architecting uh, will launch uh, a, a Mars ascent vehicle. Uh, the samples will be uh, picked up on the surface after 2020 is deposited them, uh, put on the MAV. The MAV will go into orbit uh, with the samples that will be retrieved by a satellite and orbiter that then will return and can go either straight back to Earth or in cis-lunar space where human exploration uh, has their gateway mission that, that we may anticipate them uh, retrieving those samples. So this is just a huge step and of course one of the major purposes behind the creation of LPI was to connect our scientists with the samples that were coming in and being curated at JSC. And we've continued to enhance that curation capability with more and more samples that we are uh, uh, obtaining in the solar system and bringing back. And here's the, the next major set that we're looking forward to. If we look at the outer solar system and small bodies, once again, the areas that we want to push that are brand new to us are these areas in the green. Uh, the flybys, the orbiters, landers, rovers, and return samples. Uh, this is a, a really a rich area for us to, to uh, uh, explore. We have the Europa Clipper. We're working with ESA on the uh, JUICE mission. This is a Jupiter icy uh, uh, moon explorer mission. We have uh, several small body missions, uh, Psyche, Lucy, and now DART, uh, which is now in the President's budget starting in uh, October. And so Psyche is going out to the asteroid belt and looking at uh, this metal object. This is a small body that has uh, uh, accreted to the point where it, it melted and uh, the large mass created a core but over time it was uh, uh, through impacts probably uh, destroyed the, the outer layers, the mantle areas and crust areas, leaving the core something that we would love to be able to look at and understand uh, in the terms of the differentiation process. Uh, in addition to that, Lucy will trek out to L4 and L5. These are Lagrangian points of Jupiter that have trap material uh, that, that uh, Jupiter has accumulated over time. Now, there's a lot of indication that Jupiter had a major effect in rearranging the outer part of our solar system for which the clues as to how it did that and where this material comes from may indeed be in these, uh, these Trojan asteroids that are caught in L4 and L5. Lucy will observe uh, uh, six of them. And finally in this area, DART, this is the double asteroid redirect mission uh, which is in the President's budget. It's designed to go to a binary asteroid and hit it. You know, much like we did uh, when we hit a comet uh, with deep impact in this case, we're going to really take a look at how the orbit might change. Didymos is a binary uh, that's about 780 meters in size. Uh, its moon is about 160 meters in size. We believe we can move this moon. And this gives us a perfect opportunity to watch the orbit change much more quickly than if it was just a single asteroid orbiting the sun. Uh, in fact, um, uh, the, the timeline on this means that this impact is going to be in the in October 2022, and it'll be right over Arecibo, and we'll hit it with radar. So we'll get additional information from that, uh, which is uh, uh, also incredibly important for us to understand how to mitigate uh, the small bodies uh, in, that may be intending to hit, uh, hit the Earth in the future. Uh, as we get out to the outer part of the solar system, JUICE, which is indeed the uh, Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, this is the one that will be uh, final in orbit around Ganymede. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. It has its own magnetic field. 
And it's uh, really quite an exciting ocean world. And we have um, uh, several uh, contributions, including one of the major instruments, which is an ultraviolet spectrometer. And then the Europa Clipper. This is indeed something that, that uh, we've uh, uh, been wanting to do for now almost two decades. It was in the last planetary decadal, and it's in this planetary decadal, and we're, we're well on the way of being able to uh, uh, get this mission in orbit around Jupiter, multiple flybys of Europa, to really study what this body uh, looks like, to understand its thickness and how the ocean may be communicating with the surface. In fact, it has to be communicating with the surface. There's hardly any craters on the surface. And, uh, and therefore, what is the future in this area? Well, uh, we can see that, once again, we may change our paradigm, particularly from the ocean world's perspective. You know, fly-by-orbit, land, rove. Well, for an ocean world, it now is all about uh, the reconnaissance mission, getting down on the surface, being able to shimmy down through cracks, being able to look at the ocean ice interface, where in our own ocean in the, in the Antarctic, as we go to that ocean ice interface, it's teeming with life in that interface. And then, of course, uh, hopefully getting down uh, into the, uh, under, underneath the icy crust and, uh, and really survey what the ocean is like. And we anticipate seeing hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents here on Earth are also teeming with life. Well, this is an aggressive approach. This, uh, as I said, might be our new paradigm for ocean worlds. And we expect the LPI to continue to uh, 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 work with us in creating the conferences necessary that we can talk about some of the great science that we do. And I think that's my 15 minutes. Thank you.